Hey, my name is Mike. I'm one of the senior education consultants here at The Props, as well as a maths, physics and computer science tutor, um, as well as a little bit of astrophysics from time to time. In today's video, I get to tackle a really, really interesting question. How will AI impact higher education? Now, it's no surprise that with the transformative power that AI brings into everything that it touches is already sort of making a huge impact on every single industry that is out there, whether it is quantitative or not. So there's no surprise that universities have wanted to get in on this and they um, basically use AI for what they believe are their biggest benefits. And this video is in no way to shame what universities do. I do believe from my personal perspective, having worked with many people going for machine learning and artificial intelligence master's degrees, uh, as well as a few students uh, for uh, Cambridge's MST in AI, Ethics and Society, which by the way, if you want to know a little bit more about, click on the video here. Um, these are gonna be a few of my insights that I found whilst going through the process. Now, two very common types of AI that people are exposed to on a day-to-day -day basis are generative AI, um, and that's basically this idea that computer from trained data can already generate everything that it needs to. Um, a really common example is a GPT-3, which is the language or like the computer, the sort of computer architecture that is used in ChatGPT at the moment. And then you have uh, sort of AI for more so for data uh, or surveying. So you, you basically have some um, piece of artificial intelligence that would actually check through online surveys and tables of different things in order to be able to extrapolate insights in some way. Um, so for example, uh, King's College London, they actually um, had a partnership with the AI program Remesh. They wrote a, a paper in 2023 where they were exploring basically why there was a little bit of an attainment gap between the people that were getting a two ones and a first, and it was quite significant. Um, and as a result of that, um, based on working with Ramesh, they ended up finding three things that actually was really, really interesting. I actually have the paper just to my left, just a bit of a reference, um, but it was loneliness among students, fear of fitting in due to financial restrictions, and fear of disclosure of true self. So actually, I would say one of the benefits that AI has brought so far to higher education is that it is actually having a transformative power on accessibility to people going into degrees, as well as how people are interacting with them. Information has never been more accessible than today, and that's going to be the same as tomorrow and the day after and the day after that. Um, it's, back, it's growing at an exponential rate. So in terms of the amount of access and signposting that is needed to know where to look, um, it causes people from different social classes to be able to come together and, and study together, um, which I think is really, really wonderful. And I'm certain that that is going to be something that will improve in the future. Um, it's also particularly good on the humanity side of things. Um, so if we're going back to maybe ChatGPT, for instance, I think I once had a very, very deep sort of philosophical conversation with ChatGPT. I did it as a bit of an experiment. I was really surprised with the results there. We were looking at basically the nature or the, the very definitions of kindness and what that can mean in different sort of circumstances. Not necessarily everybody's hobby, but it proved to me actually that it was very good at looking into very, very deep issues. But there are some caveats with, I mean, how you use something like that. It's not very good at solving maths problems in general. I think there's been, uh, there was a, a video from an Oxford professor not too long ago uh, where he had uh, basically tried to solve, get ChatGPT to solve an MAT paper, just the multiple choice part. And it was failing on some of the most basic questions in that paper um, without really much thought. So what is lacking in, in that sense is critical thinking. Um, so that's a very, very sort of human quality that cannot be replicated, at least right now. I think there was a little bit of a philosophical debate as to whether it can ever be truly replicated. Um, and I've actually seen this as well in quite a lot of applications for universities. So sometimes on the very rare occasion, you'd find someone who's not very confident with their writing. You might have used chat GPT to um, write an example of a personal statement for them. 
And I'm like, well, that's great, but I can already tell because it doesn't go into any particular details um, and it misses almost a little bit of human elements there that you could have done better with this and you're not really saying anything. Um, generative AI in that sense is a bit of a people pleaser. There's a lot more work that needs to be done in order to cover all subjects there. And it very much covers things on the surface, but it is very, very good at actually helping you to organize what to do and where to go in, in reality. So in the context of higher education, um, it's certainly not like great for students to be able to sort of revise from uh, in regards to their exams or maybe getting, um, but it might be good perhaps for getting a, a template idea for a report or a dissertation. Um, the universities have had to be really, really careful of this in regards to their plagiarism. <laughs> so they now, there exists, and there has existed for quite a while now, pieces of software that are actually able to detect generated text, um, especially if it doesn't match the writing style that you, that would have been expected from a piece of a certain level or something that you've already written before. Um, as well as um, AI that can actually detect whether you literally have just copied and pasted from another source. Um, again, using like AI for data. Um, so universities are really, really strict on using this when it comes to all of their assessments. Um, it's also really, really important as well when it comes to their applications. So whilst I actually work with students, uh, and if I ever do bring up something like ChatGPT, I'd say use it for guidance, but don't use that as your final draft. Maybe t there are some sentences or phrases that are nice to take from that, but it's more of a template. It might not even be the best template. And further to that, there has been um, a, like a fair amount of research into this. And again, I've got another paper just off to the side of me that actually indicates that um, a total dependence on AI tools um, actually decreases critical thinking skills. This was actually sort of talked about in a paper called The Prototype by Forbes, America's top business magazine in January 2025, written by senior editor-in-chief uh, Alex Knapp. Um, if you are depending on AI so much that you are not having to think, remember your brain is just as much a muscle as the rest of your body, then you lose your ability to be able to problem solve, to be able to debate, to be able to sort of think constructively and critically. And given that this is what universities, even like Oxford and Cambridge are looking for, it's a little bit of a worry. Um, saying that though, I'd say the biggest benefit of AI at the moment is really sort of help with getting resources, um, help with knowing where to look yourself um, and being able to get sort of ideas of general trends with things is really, really good at bridging that attainment gap and actually allowing more people to go to university. But we have to be careful when we're using AI. It's a little, little bit of a warning that we don't totally depend on it to be able to perform well or even get into uni. And there are plenty of uh, places in Czech now where that is a thing. Um, so be very, very careful when you're using AI. Of course, it is the way of the future. But we need to obviously be very, very conscious of how we integrate it into our practices. If that is something that you're thinking of yourself, because maybe you're applying for a postgraduate application, or you are perhaps going for an undergraduate degree, and you need another human being <laughs> to maybe look over your work, we can help uh, with that. Um, in particular, my case, where I've looked at, again, a lot of machine learning and AI master's degrees uh, like for applications. So, if you've liked what you've heard today, I've only really just talked about a few of like the, the benefits really uh, of and disadvantages of AI. Um, but if you have a little bit more to say on this, like and subscribe, maybe write a few comments in the comments section to talk about your experiences with it. Do you feel like you're too over-reliant or do you feel like actually it's the way of the future and, and it actually helped you in understanding something? Um, maybe send this to an, a friend if you think they're interested in the topic itself. I find it interesting. I'd love to have a proper conversation with this going in the comments section. Um, but if you have any applications where you might be using this and you're a little bit worried or you're not quite sure how to be sort of authentic in what you do and how to best use that in your practice when it comes to applications or it comes to getting ready for a test, um, have a look at this information on screen now. You can get in touch with us and get connected to one of our many education consultants or tutors 
that will best help you to maximize your chances of success, whether that be an application or in preparing for a university test or even like secondary school tests. But we are, know that we are here for you <laughs> uh, during this very exciting and transformative time. Um, and I think regardless of what you do decide to do, we do hope to hear from you soon.